This session is entitled, What's for Breakfast? We're about to meet Melanie Mocken, Market Development Manager, Australia, New Zealand for UTZ or UTS Rainforest Alliance. Melanie describes herself as, quote, an enthusiastic duchy with a dream job where her passion for sustainability, love of coffee and her not so guilty pleasure in chocolate are all combined in one. She was born in Amstelveen, a city just below Amsterdam in the Netherlands. As such, she is, I'm going to guess, the most famous Dutch-born speaker on our agenda today. Uh, just checking, maybe Andre Rieu has made a late appearance this afternoon. No, he hasn't. Melanie is. Uh, after travelling back and forth between the Netherlands and Australia, she now calls Australia home in Sydney. Amongst numerous studies and qualifications, Melanie studied international marketing and South African studies at Stellenbosch University near Cape Town in South uh, South Africa, living and travelling around South Africa. She experienced the big gap between the origin and market space of our everyday products and the need for sustainable supply chains from farm to shelf. Working for Rainforest Alliance, which is a global sustainability program for coffee, cocoa and tea, Melanie is dedicated to connecting people across the world over their favourite products. By helping Australian companies build sustainable supply chains, Melanie aspires to bridge the gap between origin and Australia, enabling the development of products that create better livelihoods for farmers so that we as customers can then trust and enjoy them. She loves travel. She has been to every continent in the world except for Antarctica, and she has once jumped from the world's highest commercial natural bungee jump. She's into yoga, she's into salsa dancing, learning Spanish, watching Trevor Noah, missing her dog who was back in the Netherlands. She can recite all of the dialogue from the TV show Friends. She loves nothing more than having brekkie with poached egg, smashed avocado and feta cheese, which she said is her new addiction. It's not a thing in the Netherlands, it is here in Australia. But her claim to fame, I'm not making this up, is that she and her sister are apparently the greatest ABBA karaoke duo that you will ever hear. She is here to talk sustainable sourcing of their coffee, cocoa, tea, and ABBA obsession. Mamma Mia, here we go again. It's the Dutch Dancing Queen. Please welcome Melanie. Thank you, uh, Andrew. So anyone who's up for karaoke tonight, please let me know. Well, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Perhaps you took your time for it because it's Saturday with like some chocolate pancakes, healthy banana smoothie, cup of tea, a delicious espresso to finish. Specialty, of course, because we're in Australia and we know coffee and the best coffee is in Sydney, not in Melbourne. So I don't know that you could. Or maybe you didn't even have time for breakfast because it's Saturday and you really wanted to sleep in, but you also wanted to go here because, you know, you're a good person who wants to save the world, but 9 a.m. on a Saturday is really early. So you just grab the coffee from your favorite cafe around the corner and a chocolate banana bread. Now, can I ask you, did you stop to think for a moment about where your products are coming from? So, for example, do you know what this is? Anyone? Blue? Great, wow, okay, no, that's really impressive. Usually people say, oh, it's a melon or something. <laughs> yeah, it's a cocoa pot. So the cocoa beans inside the pot are taken out, dried, and eventually the dried cocoa beans are used to, or are ground into butter and powder that's used to make chocolate. We want to know all about the health benefits and the quality of our products, but what do we really know about the sustainability of our products? We often do things really mechanically, you know, because we're in a rush. I'm Dutch, but still I'm always late. Or because we like that brand or that cafe is just really convenient around the corner. But knowing the origin of your products is really essential for knowing whether they've been produced in a sustainable way. I mean, if you want to make the world a better place, um, if you want to make a change, you can only make a change if you know what to change. So let me give you a few, few insights. There are more than 5 million cocoa farmers worldwide. Studies show that, that the majority of them are still living on less than a dollar a day. Also, with aging cocoa trees, many farmers resort to 
um, cutting nearby forests for new plantations, making cocoa farming a strong contributor to climate change, um, to deforestation. Also, while women contribute to uh, the majority of the work in West Africa, which is the main cocoa producing region, um, they only own about a quarter of the land. And as for coffee, there are more than 25 million coffee farmers, uh, people depending on coffee, with the main coffee producing countries being Brazil, Vietnam, and Colombia. Coffee is increasingly impacted by the effects of climate change. And I would like to show you the following slide. Oh, sorry, this is also what I still wanted to say. Um, Martin Luther King actually really phrased it really beautiful um, already back in 1967. Before you've eaten breakfast in the morning, you've relied on more than half the world. And that is really important to realize. So this is what I was talking about, what I wanted to show you. So the green area is the area currently suited for uh, coffee production in Vietnam. If you uh, look, this is 2014. If you look at the next slide, this is 2020. And then if you look at this, researchers suspect the area suited for coffee growing uh, in Vietnam will be uh, reduced by more than 50% in 2050 if these effects of climate change persist. But even when you're aware of these issues and you, know, you care about them and you want to change them, what can you as an individual do or what can we as individuals do to tackle problems like deforestation, ending gender inequality, and then also stopping climate change while you're at it? You know, I'm really happy if I manage to have breakfast in the morning at all. So I would like to show you a little video that might help you with this thought. You are a good person. You spend time with your family. You work out at the gym. Come on, push, push. You conserve water while showering. You like nice clothes. You give to charity. You recycle. You drive a Prius, but you use your bike when you can. You enjoy the occasional distraction at work. And you always send a card on Mother's Day. Always. But there's a part of you that tells yourself that you're not so good, that you could be doing more, that the world is falling apart at the seams and all you've been doing is yoga. One day you see that the rainforest is being destroyed at a staggering rate of 32 million acres a year. That's the equivalent of one football field every 78 seconds. You feel bad, angry, guilty. You've been apathetic for too long. You want to do something about it. You must do something about it. Well, this is what you're not going to do. I quit! You're not going to quit your job, leave your family, get on the next flight to Nicaragua, take a bus to the edge of the jungle, then hoof it across rivers, lakes, and streams on a quest to the very heart of the rainforest. Take me to the heart of the rainforest. You're getting closer. You're almost there. You have arrived. You're not going to ingratiate yourself with the local tribesmen, go to great lengths to earn their respect and trust. Nope. No, 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 no! <laughs> it is around now you realize you're living out the cliché gringo fantasy of becoming an honorary native and leading the resistant forces. But screw it. If they could do it, so can you. I'm going to save you! This guy comes over here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to pull his zapping bats right through him, right over here. You're not going to coordinate and occupy the rainforest movement. Realize it's hopeless, summon the power of the gods, lead a revolution against the deforesters and their multinational employers in an apocalyptic once and for all battle to save humanity, only to awaken two days later in an El Salvadorian hospital with two toes missing on your left foot, hobble out of Central America, up through Mexico, across the Sierra Madre where you break down, have your first cigarette in four years, accidentally start a wildfire killing off the endangered species that once served as your occupational distraction, finally make it back home only to find you've been replaced at work by a guy named TJ and that things at home are not what they used to be. You're not going to do any of these things, but what you can do is follow the frog. Buying Rainforest Alliance certified products ensures the future of our rainforests so that you don't have to do the things you shouldn't do anyway. Just follow the frog.
Buying Rainforest Alliance certified products ensures the future of our rainforests so that you don't have to do the things you shouldn't do anyway. Just follow the frog. <laughs> yeah, so just keep this in mind. It still supports me every now and then when I have a slight panic attack of how I haven't solved all the problems yet. Um, so yeah, certification programs like Oots and Rainforest Alliance enable companies and customers to know the exact origin of their products through an online tra uh, traceability system. Uh, traceability and transparency are the cornerstones of certification because they enable accountability and hence trust that the products carrying our labels have actually contributed to make a better life for the people who have produced it. So what do we do exactly? How, how does it work? Well, we empower farmers to run their farm in a successful way by helping them to implement good farming practices. These farming practices enable them to increase their yield, so higher quantity over higher quality, um, while reducing their input costs. And then in addition, with an Oots premium they receive, they can significantly increase their income. Um, at the same time, we uh, help them to provide good working conditions for their workers and take better care of the environment. Um, at the same time, through training, we create awareness and understanding of issues like uh, health and safety, the importance of education for children, and climate change adaptation and mitigation measures. Um, on the other hand, we create awareness in the market. Um, we work with companies to stimulate them to convert to sustainable sourcing and create transparent supply chains. And that is really my job here in, here in Australia, even though many of my friends still think I'm still just drinking coffee and drinking, uh, eating chocolate all day, but anyway. Um, this is how we're supporting the, the companies. So um, currently, Oots and Rainforest Alliance work with more than a million farmers and workers worldwide focused on coffee, cocoa, and tea. And we see really great results. Um, for example, our coffee farmers in Colombia indicate that they have a 65% higher net income than if they had not been part of our program. And our coffee um, of our cocoa farmers in Cote d'Ivoire indicate that they um, use the majority of their uh, income to send their children to school. And Brazil, Brazilian coffee farmers see significant quality improvements in their coffee. And this is really great because it might just seem like a label, but there's a whole system behind it to really make a positive impact to the world. So next time you're in the supermarket, research your favorite brands, look for our logos and follow the frog and also the red Oots label, but you know, that's a little less catchy tagline. Um, research your favorite products as well who might not be carrying the logo. So do they have responsible uh, practices? Where are they sourcing from? Uh, ask questions on social media and encourage them to convert to sustainable sources. Um, change is really happening. We see that there's, because of a growing demand from their customers, more and more companies are making commitments to 100% sustainable sourcing, which is really great because we really can see that with our choices, we can make a big difference. I would like to leave you with a personal experience I had um, that really showed me the impact of our program and, continue, and encouraged me to continue working for our organization as well as to continue fighting for what still needs to be done. So at the end of 2016, I traveled to um, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is the largest cocoa producer worldwide and together with neighbor Ghana, accounts for nearly 70% of global cocoa supply. We traveled to, uh, we attended a farmer field school to, um, which was about the importance of education for children. And um, afterwards we had the opportunity to speak with the farmers. We met Asha too, who is mother of, of eight children. She has uh, six sons and two daughters. And uh, she told us about uh, her experience with the Oots program. So after her husband had unfortunately passed away and she was left alone to look after her children. Um, this was really hard, of course, but with the things she'd learned through the Oots program, she managed to actually make a decent living. So that is, after her husband's passing, she inherited the farm which was really special because normally it would go to the next man in line, which would be like an uncle or a brother. And with the better farming practices she'd learned, she was able to increase her yield and in combination with the Oots Premium, this really significantly increased her income. She could then use this income to hire additional workers if necessary, 
But more importantly, she was able to send her children to school, of which her oldest was now studying in Germany. And then when someone of the group who was there, because we were traveling with an international group, asked her, oh, that, that's really great, where in Germany? She said, I don't care, but I'm, I'm so happy he's in Germany. And it was really inspiring to see Sarah's sense of accomplishment, her empowerment, and her strength. But it also showed me that um, you know, still a lot needs to be done. Because when we asked her what she wanted for her children, she said, I wouldn't want them to go into cocoa farming. I would want them to study. Because she didn't want them to live the life she leads. So even though we'd been able to make a positive change and to impact her life, we still have a long way to go. So for today, with all these amazing stories, don't walk away with just inspiration. Really walk away with a new mindset. And then for tomorrow, ask yourself, what am I having for breakfast? Thanks. Thank you.